All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here to talk about the ban list. I don't normally do things like this, but I figured it'd be fun to kind of share my thoughts and also kind of talk about some fun facts about the differences between the English and Japan meta and my understanding of what's really happening with these ban lists. So starting off right away, the premium, nothing's changing. I think at this point, we all kind of understand that Wishroad's not really focusing on V premium at all. They're kind of focusing more on standard um, and a little bit with premium just because history collection just came out recently for English. So this is kind of the most important thing they're targeting at the moment. V premium is not a concern. Going right into standard, Brainwash Swirler and GG. This is very obviously a Chrono Jet hit. Similar to what Japan was doing if you were playing Brainwash Swirler and GG together in Jet, you lost access to Swirler because you would never get rid of GG for Swirler in Chrono Jet. You just wouldn't do that. So Chrono Jet players, uh, sorry, but the day of your big old 40K beater boosters is over, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, moving on to Ava. Ava and Combined Rush are now cho choice restricted. Not that big of a deal to Ava players. From my understanding, there's just so much versatility with the deck now that you just fill that slot easily. I feel like some people weren't even running Combined Rusher, but it still hurts the deck for certain play styles. So I do feel like it is kind of a nerf, but Ava is starting to get slowly phased out of the meta anyways, at least in English, people are still gonna play it. It's still a really good deck. This isn't that big of a deal, but this is very obviously a cut copy paste of what Japan's doing. So then moving on, we're starting into premium. So this is where it gets really interesting because these are all basically copies of what Japan is doing. So Koko Shigurasu being banned is basically just Wish Road saying that you can't blow up your opponent's board, you can't blow up their hand and dominate them with Rene altogether. They don't want you doing that because they don't think it's fun. So sorry, but there's gotta be other things Murakuma player or Nubatama players can do. Murakuma, Nubatama, it's all the same thing, right? Going into Narukami, full Bronto being banned is Again, copying exactly what Japan was doing. So a fun story about Full Bronto is that when Japan announced that they were banning it and they didn't ban it here, we just thought it was kind of like, oh, they're future proofing or maybe they're thinking it's gonna be a problem in Japan, but we still play tested it out here because that's what you do. We tested out Full Bronto Premium here in English with the, because we already knew that History Collection was just all erratas and reprints, so we had all the cards and it didn't feel that oppressive, at least, from a personal experience and also didn't feel like anything was happening to the point where it felt like this needed to be hit. Eradicators felt stronger, in my opinion. The whole point of the full Bronto ban is because of history collection, you now have access to striding early against your opponent while they're at grade two. So if you're on the old Vanquisher and you don't have markers, you can stride Zoros, get your Excel markers, swing at them, then they hit grade three, and then the next stride you go into stun verse, and then you remove the stun verse from the G zone, blow up their hand and their board, and then your Vanguard swings, and then you get an additional swing with full Bronto. It's just like a, a lot in general, and I feel like, I mean, you can you can also still use full Bronto while you're on your Zoros turn as well, just to like make it extra powerful. It, it, there's just a lot you can do early while your opponent's at grade two. So I do understand that they're like, oh, well, Narukami kind of has like easy access to this kind of steamrolling effect. Personally, I think it was okay. I think if anything, Vanquisher deserved this. Like Vanquisher was kind of just sitting back on the premium scale. Eradicators are kind of dominating the Narukami scene, but I get it. You don't want one clan to showcase two different decks that are dominating and kind of shifting from Eradicator to Vanquisher isn't a good look either. So a full Bronto ban makes sense. The Karenis ban, this one I'm a little bit confused about because I understand why it's banned in Japan. I don't understand why it's banned here. In Japan, they have the V promo for Lotus, Battle Flag, Knight, Lotus. Lotus lets you call something from the deck by counterblasting too. Uh, you can then use Karenis to rest itself, get your counter charge back, and then you can use Isalta which is when it's placed or discarded, you can restand a back row rear guard and Lotus isn't once per turn, it's an act ability. So you can kind of keep doing this like loop where you just keep using Karenis and Lotus and Assalta, pull all the normal units out of your deck. Your Gurgit Vanguard is pumping up all the numbers because of all the, all the Excel numbers, all the Excel markers. And then you're thinning out your deck, you're making a huge board, huge numbers, your deck's full of triggers and you're kind of 
doing this whole solitaire turn to kind of make the combo work. It's not, I guess, healthy. It makes sense why it's banned in Japan. I don't understand why it'd be banned here, because we don't have Lotus. It's a Japanese exclusive promo. I do feel like Bushiro just kind of went, oh, we'll, we'll just cop, copy Japan, put it over there. It should work out just fine. Karenis is, is a good card. I'll give I'll give it that. The access to counter charge is nice. I don't see premium gold pattern players running Karenis and Assalta just for those two reasons, just for access to consistent counter charge. That just, it doesn't seem worth it to me. So the fact that Karenis is banned in English is a little strange, but whatever. I wasn't going to run Karenis anyway, so <laughs> it doesn't really affect me. Moving on, because we got more for premium. Masquerade Harry and Nightmare Doll Al Alice are now unrestricted, meaning you can play them together again. I think this is great especially because we have more of an incentive for you to run Harry if you want to go that route with History Collection and use the G unit to stride onto your Harry and get your markers and blah, blah, blah. Basically kind of urging players to kind of start running more support cards and allowing players to run Alice and Harry is nice. So I think this is fair. I don't think this Alice coming back is a problem at all. And Toronto being hit to one. Yes, thank you, Bushy. I do remember players making fun of the fact that and Tirana not getting hit in the premium meta on the last restriction list was just like, wow, I can't believe Entorana got away with that. Because they hit in Gelsa, but they didn't hit Entorana. And I feel like more people were upset about the consistency with Entorana more than the ride down within Gelsa. It, it, it was more of the problem, I would say. But now Entorana's hit to one. I feel like people are still going to run it. They probably might still run it for the search for the gear cat. So who knows, but we'll see what happens after History Collection. We get some tournaments going, we have BCS coming up. After the dust settles, we'll see how it goes. But I still think Gear Chronicle is going to make a guest appearance, per se. Um, so that's pretty much it for the ban list. I thought it'd be fun to kind of show off, even though it seems like we're copying Japan, there's still a little bit of difference between the two formats. And it's only for V Premium, which is funny, but I thought I'd just share anyways. For English, we have three bans. Percival's banned, Rose's banned, Cutery's banned. So Cutery and Rose are banned because Bermuda Triangle and Highlander and all that stuff, really good. And for whatever reason, Cutery is not a problem in Japan. They have no issue with a searcher that look, basically grabs any card you need. In English, that's a problem card because the search is unhealthy. I can see Cutery coming back. That's just me. Rosa, I don't know that much about. I know it's more of an extender and a searcher, has a beat stick, I guess. It's, it gets 10k when it's called from the bind zone. I don't really know if this is much of an issue for V Premium as well, but it doesn't seem on paper that bad, but that's just my guess. First of all, being banned in V Premium, everyone knows how I feel about this. I think it's ridiculous. It was just such a good, fun card for all, for the entire clan, and I understand that every clan was running it, but we were allowed to run one copy at one point. What was wrong with that? So that's just my feelings about first of all, but here's kind of the EN side. The Japan side is just very targeted towards Gold Paladin. Percival is allowed at one, which is really cool for Japan. However, Aglaville to one, that's really interesting. So I feel like it's still kind of like they're trying to do the balance where it's like, we don't want people running Percival and Aglaville in every Gold Paladin deck at play sets. But I feel like hitting the Aglaville was just such a big hurt because it's such a good staple. Great right target, great beat stick. It just kind of helped Keep your turns going. It fueled your soul. Hitting it to one is like, man, that, that kind of sucks. And the only way you're going to bring it back out is your one Percival. So I, I feel like that really knocked down Gear, Gear Chronicle. I feel like that really knocked down Gold Paladin a lot in Japan, at least in terms of its representation. But I know Gold Paladin had a higher representation for V Premium in Japan than it did here in EN. So. I just wanted to share my thoughts. I don't really think V Premium needs to really be touched on. I don't think it's important right now. I think V Premium is just kind of sitting. I feel like these hits isn't really that impactful to the V Premium meta. If you even still play, are you if you're playing V Premium right now? I know we have BCS coming up, so there still will be V Premium V Premium players. Can't talk right now. I just wanted to share what well little fun fact about the differences we're still waiting on. Um, if we're starting to kind of shift towards this like copying Japan thing, because like this is this is a straight copy paste. Like I'm not missing anything here, right? So yeah, that's pretty much it. Overall, kind of in summary, Jet's gonna get hit really bad. Ava's not really affected that bad, 
and premium just kind of seems like we're just copying what Japan's doing, but it all seems there. One thing I did want to say for standard, it's interesting to copy Japan, considering the fact that we don't have certain nations like Monster Strike, we don't have Token Rambu, we don't have Musha King, right? It's Musha King, the Beetle Nation. We don't have these decks, and all three of those decks were really good, or all those nations were really good, and we don't have them here. So that means that the like the top five decks between like Gandiva, Jet, Ava, and like all the other Japan focused nations, that was the meta. And then here it's just mostly going to be Gandiva because Jet's got hurt. Ava's getting a slight nerf and Gandiva is untouched, meaning that everyone is basically going to play Gandiva in this upcoming circuit for BCS. It's going to be a little bit obnoxious, I think. I feel like maybe Bushiroad should have taken that into account with the fact that we don't have these Japanese exclusive nations to kind of keep a balance. We'll see. Jet, I still think, can survive without Swirler. It's not the end of the world. It's not like the deck is unplayable. It just won't be as big with the numbers. Same thing with Ava. The deck is still going to be played really well, but I think that there's more of an incentive to stick with Gandiva at this point now. And with all that being said, that's just my summary, my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think. If there's any, anything that you wanted me to point out or anything that you think I missed, just let me know because, you know, even though we do play kind of casually and this is more for fun, it is interesting to kind of keep up with the meta and understand what's going on because we do go to regionals. We do play competitively. We do like to improve. Let me know if there's anything on the premium list that you think should be unrestricted, just kind of considering how the meta is looking right now. and. Share your thoughts. I want to hear it. If you want to see more discussion videos or more kind of like meta analysis videos too, considering with time, hopefully I can do stuff like that as well. But let me know if this is something that you're interested in. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.